Welcome to the Oasis in the Middle of the Week. We're so glad that you are joining us, whether you are online or in person. We're just so glad to worship the Lord with you this morning. If you are able, please feel free to stand up. I'm going to read from 1 John 3, verses 23 and 24. And it says, This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of, Je of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. Let's pray. Lord God, we just come and enter into your presence this morning, Lord God. We know that as we abide in you, you abide in us. So, Lord God, we just enter fully into who you are this morning, Lord God. We pray that you would have your way in the service, Lord God, that you would have your way in our hearts. And, Lord God, that you would be magnified in this place. We want to give you all honor and glory, Lord God. We pray that you would just anoint the word that is being brought today and that you would anoint this time together, that we might have a time of worshiping you and giving you all glory and honor. And so we just pray this in your most precious name. Amen. Rejoicing. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the hand of God in all my life I see. And the reason of my bliss, yes, the secret all is this, that the Comforter abides with me. He abides. Once I had no peace within Till I heard how Jesus died upon the tree Then I fell down at his feet And there came a peace so sweet Now the Comforter abides with me He abides, he abides Hallelujah, he abides with me I'm rejoicing night and day Comforter abides with me. He is with me everywhere, and he knows my every care. I'm as happy as a bird and just as free. For the Spirit has control, Jesus satisfies my soul. Since the Comforter abides with me, he abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he Rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. There's no thirsting for the things of the world, they've taken wings. Long ago I gave them up and instantly. All my night was turned to day, all my burdens rolled away. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. Sing that again. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the Comforter abides with me. Thank 
solutions is there trouble anywhere we should never take and shield thee thou will find a solace there blessed savior thou hast promised thou will all our burdens bear may we ever lord be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer soon What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am warm. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home.
Father, we thank you that we can run to you, Lord, today. We thank you, Lord, that you're always calling us back to you, Lord Jesus. We praise you for that today. We thank you today that as we come together, we dwell in the shelter of the Most High and we rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you that you're our fortress, you're our refuge, you're God, you're, you're the one that we trust. And we thank you today that we can come before you, trusting you fully and completely. We thank you that you'll save us from everything the enemy would try to bring against us and no deadly pestilence will harm us. We thank you that uh, no weapon formed against us will prosper. We thank you today, Lord, that you cover us with your presence and we find refuge and safety there. Your faithfulness, who you are, will be our shield and our rampart, our protection, so we'll not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. We understand there may be a thousand that followed our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but those things will not come near us as we come into your presence. We'll only observe with our eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. We thank you, Lord, that you are our refuge and we're determined to make the most high our dwelling place. Lord, we consciously come into your presence. God, we stay there, Lord. There no harm will overtake us and no disaster will, will come near us. We thank you, Lord, that you're 
protection is around about us. You encamp angels around about our homes to protect us. When we left there to come here, Lord, and anywhere we go, Lord, you assign angels to go with us, to watch over us in all of our ways and to lift us up in their hands so that we don't strike our feet against the stone. I thank you today, Lord, that your church continues to thrive and go forward because the gates of hell cannot prevail against her. We thank you for that. We praise you for it. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor for all that you do and all that you accomplish. We thank Thank you for our nation. Once again, we pray for this nation. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch this nation. I pray as we stand in the gap, Lord, that you would hear our cry, the cry of your people who are called by your name, humbling ourselves, praying and seeking your face, Lord, turning from our ways to your ways. God, we pray, Lord, that you would have mercy upon us as we repent of our sins, the sins of this nation. God, we pray, Lord, that you would guide and direct us, Lord, be with our leaders, national, state, and local leaders, school boards, and school administrators administrators, Lord. Touch them, Lord. We pray for those that are uh, believers, Lord. Help them to operate in faith and not fear. For those that have evil intent, we pray that you'd turn their hearts, Lord. You'd save them, Lord. Draw them to you. God, if their hearts would not be changed, Lord, I pray remove them from their place of influence, that we will not be influenced with the evil that's in their heart. God, we pray, Lord, that you would rescue us. Your word declares that you will when we call upon you. We thank you, Lord, that when we walk with you, we tread upon the lion and the cobra. We trample the great lion and the serpent. Because we love you, Lord, we know that you'll rescue us, and God, we praise you for that. We know that you protect us, Lord, because we acknowledge your name, and we acknowledge that name of Jesus above every name in this house and no matter where we are. Your word declares that at the name of Jesus, everything bows at the name of Jesus, not will, but does in Jesus' name right now. We thank you, Lord, that when we hear your name, there's just a praise that rises up within us. When the demonic hear your name they tremble and flee god we thank you lord when we speak your name we come into the very presence of the most high almighty god in the name of jesus and jesus you told us as we come in as we uh, ask anything in your name you'll ask the father and he'll give it to us so today we're going to ask you to do the miracles that are needed and in, in lives lord we're going to ask you to restore we're going to ask you to renew cast those mountains into the sea lord god we thank you lord your word declares that we had faith as a mustard seed lord Lord, we'd speak to these mountains. They'd be cast into the sea. We believe your word today. We give you the praise and the honor and glory for it. I thank you, Lord, that you're with us. I thank you that when we call upon you, you answer us. Where there's trouble, you deliver us. You never leave us nor forsake us. You're always there for us. We give you the glory and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, as you bring us out of trouble, you deliver us with honor and power, displaying your power and bringing honor to your name. Today, there's a table of blessing prepared in the presence of our enemies for us, and we give you the praise and the honor and glory for that. We thank you, Lord, that we walk to that table confidently, not being distracted by our own thoughts or the, the words of others, Lord, but we walk to that table and receive everything you have for us today, whether it be healing or whether it be restoration, Lord, whether it was a financial need. God, I thank you that if we leave here today, the promise is we'll be satisfied with long life and eternity, but while we're here, you'll show us your salvation each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give him a great praise here in this house today. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. You may be seated if you'd like to be seated. Uh, we're going to take our offering. If you're online, welcome. Facebook and YouTube, we welcome you to uh, join with us in this uh, act of worship and praise as we give in this offering. We want to thank you uh, for your faithfulness in giving. I know that God blesses your generosity. He, he um, blesses a cheerful giver, and we thank the Lord. If you're online, you can give uh, through our mobile app, Harrisburg First Assembly, or our website, hbgfirst.org, and it's very easy to give online. We thank you in advance, so we praise the Lord for his faithfulness. Father, we thank you for your goodness today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you give to us. And we pray, Lord, that as we put this offering in your hand, we release it from our hands into your hands. I pray you will multiply it. I pray that you'd use it for your honor and glory. Your kingdom would expand, and God will give you the praise for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. As you give, Bill's going to come and do trivia with, for us here this morning. Good morning. 
<laughs> One more time. Good morning, everybody. Yes, hallelujah. You know, uh, Jen's selections of songs this morning kind of got to me. Uh, like many of you, the majority of my life here on earth is behind me and not ahead of me. And uh, when I hear those songs, I kind of look forward to that day. But yet, it's hard when you think about leaving behind others that you, you love dearly. So anyway, that got to me this morning. But like I said, majority of my life on this earth is behind me. But my life is going to be in eternity with him. So hallelujah. Are you ready for trivia? Yes. All right. I try to make it as hard as I could this morning. So uh, the first one is, what do... Lepidopterists collect. Lepidopterists. Do they collect stamps, comic books, cups, butterflies, or thimbles? Thimbles is a good answer. It's not the right one, though. What? Butterflies is correct. You've been chasing those butterflies down south, huh? All right. Butterflies is correct. Entomologist is the overall umbrella for bugs and insects, but Lepidopterists do butterflies. Okay, what mammal received the first successful blood transfusion in history? First successful blood transfusion. Was it a human? Was it a monkey? Was it a dog? Was it a pig? Or a horse? He said a dog? A monkey. He said a monkey. You would think that would be typical, but it's not. A horse? No, wasn't a horse either. A human. You would think that would be right, but it's not. A dog is correct. You ran out of answers, didn't you? A dog is correct. <laughs> uh, the first transfusion was tried in 1628, and it wasn't successful until 1665, and that's with a dog. Dr. Richard Lower received, revived a dog using blood from another dog. Two years later, in 1667, it was successful in humans. 1667. In 1901, an Austrian doctor discovered that there were different blood types. So these first experiments, they had to get lucky to have the blood type or it wouldn't work. So, and believe it or not, dogs have different blood types. I mean, they're like five or six or seven. So anyway, he got lucky with the first ones. Uh, what were lighthouses formerly known as? Seasides, wickies, shore lights, keepers, or sea eyes? Sea eyes? That's. I'm, I'm getting a lot of answers, and none of them are right. <laughs> shore lights is another good guess, but it's not the right one. Keepers. They keep the lights going and everything, but it's not the name of them. It's wickers. Wickies, wickers. Because they use wicks to keep the lights going, and they had to do this 24 hours a day. So now today everything is electronic. Who came up with the design for the 50-star U.S. flag? Was it a housewife? Dwight Eisenhower? a school student, or John D. Rockefeller? A school student is correct. That one must have been the easy one. Who came up with the design for the 50-star flag? Uh, was it a housewife, Dwight Eisenhower, a school student, or Rockefeller? It was a school student. He was in high school. Robert Heft. There was a national competition for the flag design. And uh, in 1959, Eisenhower chose this Robert Heff's design, and that's where we've got the, the flag today. 
Uh, which was the last state to come into the union? Hawaii, Hawaii is correct. I just gave these to uh, Diane before, and she said it was either Alaska or Hawaii. So I said, that's not the right answer. It's one or the other. Okay, Bible trivia. And like I said, I made these as hard as I could. I spent an hour just doing the, the Bible side of this trivia. What is the longest name in the Bible? I'm not giving you any clues other than it's in Isaiah 8, verses 1 through 4. The longest name in the Bible. Ebuchadnezzar? That's pretty good. It's kind of long, but it's not long enough. It's not Melchizedek. It's Mayor Shall Hash Baz. Mayor Shall Hash Baz. And it was Isaiah's son who he named before he was ever born. He had relations with a prophetess, and that's when Mayor Shell Hasbaz was born. So that's Isaiah's son. And that's in uh, Isaiah 8, 1 through 4. One of the reasons I did this made it difficult so that you're probably saying, I don't believe him. So you can look it up and, and read it yourself. What was the name of the place where Abraham and Amalek swore an oath together? I'm doing pretty good this morning. What was the name of the place where Abraham and Amalek swore an oath together? It's in Genesis 21, 27 through 31. No guesses? Beersheba, where they made an oath together. In which book of the Bible, you should know this one, in which book of the Bible do we read about Haman? Esther is correct. It's always the ladies that answer that. It's, don't guys read Esther? Is it, what is, anyway, it's Esther. That was a good answer and the right one. Uh, who was Bernice in the Bible? Keep going, Paul. King Agrippa. She was his sister and his wife. So that's why he talked about living on this side of Jesus. Things were kind of messed up back then. She was his sister and his wife. And in Acts 25, 26, Agrippa was judging Paul. And she was with him on every one of the cases that, that this happened. Her name was Bernice. Where in the Bible are apples mentioned for the first time? This was impossible. Where in the Bible are apples mentioned for the first time? Song of Solomon? That's a good guess. But it's not right. Garden of Eden. I was waiting for somebody to say that. Nope. Nope. It doesn't mention an apple. There's fruits, different fruits were in there, and the one had the tree that said, you can't touch this one. Oh. Apple, of Apple of his eye. Well, that's close, but not right. It's in Proverbs 25:11. Like apples of gold and silver is a rightly ruling given. That's Proverbs 25:11. That's the first time an apple's mentioned. People typically think of Genesis. And the fruit. Okay. What did King Solomon call the two pillars he had erected at the entrance to the temple? What did Solomon call the two pillars that he had erected at the entrance to the temple? This is in 1 Kings 7.21. They've got names. The one to the south was Jachin, and the one to the north was Boaz. I succeeded in doing what I wanted to do this morning. <laughs> so
stumped most of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a good day. Well, I'm glad Bill puts all that effort into stumping us, right? <laughs> God's good. Anybody have a praise or a prayer request you want to make known? I want to welcome everyone online. It's good to see Nelson online with us. Um, uh, also, Sandy Anderson, it's good to see Sandy online, Larry, Larry Knopp, uh, it's good to see uh, him online, it's good to see Andy here instead of online today, so uh, anybody else, you have a praise, right here, Gail has something, Tommy, or a prayer request. Praise. I praise God for his continuity, even when I'm not, I am, uh, even when my emotions get the best of me. God is always constant, and I can always find the answer in his word. Amen. And if I do that first, I win every time. Praise the Lord. He's always there. Gail's going to have a procedure this afternoon, so remember her in prayer. Right here, Janet has something, Tom. Janet. Okay. Uh, I have a, a praise. My nephew <clears throat> that we've been praying for called me the other day from home, and he sounds really, very good. He's still going for dialysis three times a week but he sounded like his old self praise the so lord i praise god for that uh prayer request and i don't usually do that it's for me i don't know what's going on but everything hurts okay everything i've been living on tylenol oh. and uh you can only take so much of that Amen. and it doesn't last that long i'm gonna pray for janet the lord touch her Anybody else? You have a praise or a prayer request back here, Hilda? Remember, my daughter, continue to pray for her. She seems to be doing well. Uh, Zeke, he got a spacer in his, his tooth. He'll show everybody afterwards if you want to see it. And so, uh, remember him in prayer. And uh, also uh, Missy Kane. Remember Mary Robinson. Talked to Mary yesterday. She's still in uh, hospital or rehab. And she's having a problem with her uh, leg. Bernice uh, Schultz, I saw Bernice yesterday. Bernice seemed to be weaker the last two days that I saw her. So remember her in, in prayer. Hilda, go ahead. Um, I just want to thank God that last night was the first night I was able to sleep on my right side for a week Praise and God. a half. So God's working a miracle there. Amen. And continue to pray for Larry Givens. Larry Givens, the Lord would touch him as well. Touch him. Anybody else? You have a praise or a prayer request? Anyone? Kathy? Kathy needs the mic, Tom. All right behind you. Mar get Marge right behind you. Mm. Right behind you, Tom. Mm. Yeah. Um, pray for Abe. He's been having problems with his neck and his back. And uh, he, at times he can't hardly uh, turn his neck at all. Uh, so give him an prayer that it gets better. Just remember Abe in prayer. Okay. Also, Kathy has a prayer request. I'd like to pray for my brother Gregory, who has COVID, and he also has lung cancer, and he was vaccinated. He seems to be doing okay. My brother Michael, who has COVID, who is still recovering, who's doing somewhat well, and my sister, Judy, who yeah. has cancer. Um, remember. And I would like prayer for strength Amen. at this point. Amen. Thank you. Praise. Tom has a friend by the name of Russ that uh, we want to be praying for as well, that God would touch him, minister to him. Anybody else? You have a praise or a prayer request that you want to make known? Anyone before we go to the Lord in prayer? Kim? I have a couple of uh, praise reports. Um, I thank the Lord for uh, helping me to get into physical therapy. I had torn my rotator cuff, which is really painful. And the doctor told me, you know, you can go for physical therapy. And it is painful, but, you know, it's really helping. So Good. I believe it's being healed, and I thank the Lord for that. You know, I didn't really want to have to go for a surgery. And then you have to go for physical therapy anyway. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be working out really well, and I'm really grateful for that. And my husband and I both had COVID back in November, and my husband was around um, a friend of ours. He had him, we're helping an older lady, and she was moving some things, and they were in his pickup truck for quite a while. They drove to York, and they drove back here, 
And the next day she called and she said, I'm really feeling sick and I think the people that I'm living with, I think we all have COVID. Well, they did, but Ralph didn't get COVID. Praise the Lord. So I'm praising the Lord for these antibodies because, you know, Amen. the Lord knows exactly what to do. Exactly. And I was concerned because my husband has some underlying issues, mm -hmm. but I wasn't overtly concerned. Right. But I said, Lord, thank you for the antibodies and I thank you that Amen. he's not going to get sick. Amen. So, you know, anybody who's had COVID, just, you know, trust the Lord that, you know, he knows what to do. Yeah. We didn't go and get vaccinated because we figured that, you know, antibodies <laughs> were knows what right. he's doing. So I praise the Lord. And also, we had a nice little vacation this past week. We left on Friday and our family, we went to Wildwood. The rest of the family got a big room and kind of stayed together. And they left on Sunday. And Ralph and I had decided that we would stay an extra day. We had a really nice time. We left Monday, and we were two hours away from the beach, and my daughter-in-law called me and said, have you left yet? I said, yeah, Faith. And she said, oh, well, Liam, that's my grandson. He's so sweet. He's 11. He took his homework binder with him, and she didn't know he took it in the room. And apparently he was working on some stuff, and he stuck it in a drawer for safekeeping. <laughs> and they got home and didn't have the homework binder. And she said, oh, she said, he needs that. And I said, well, can't they send you the paper? She said, can't go back to school even, like, until he gets it. So we turned around and we went back. And I was really praying because my husband's had some issues. And driving for a long period of time, he hasn't driven since he lost his truck driving job. Mm -hmm. We were in his truck for nine hours till we went back and came back. And it all worked out really well. And I was just really glad. I told my son. If this was like the busy season, they'd have cleaned that room already, and they'd have thrown that thing in the trash. Mm -hmm. His homework and everything he's done this year was in this big binder. I said, I'm just really grateful that you went down in the time that you did, and we were there when we were. So God is so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Paul? Uh, I want to praise the Lord because what you called, uh, I didn't, I was waiting for a bus to go into the town, and nobody, it, it, came along so um i just walked in mm -hmm. and it wasn't as far as i thought it was it just it just wasn't as far as i thought it was and um uh, i want to pray for the people at, at work you know they they um uh, they show me things at, that i don't believe you know they they show me all kind of stuff and uh uh you have to like um you have to like kind of be uh wise about what you're doing and uh they're wiser amen anybody else you have a praise or a prayer request you want to make known anyone if not we're going to go to the lord in prayer it's good to see you here today good to have everyone online gene i just thank the lord for his protection i can see so many times that i could have fallen and i did not praise the lord I, I, when I hear everything about COVID, 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 I just praise the Lord that he has that wall of protection around me. He has his, his, whatever it is in my life, in my body that I need, he's taken care of me. Amen. He has that wall and I just praise him and I praise him and I praise him for what he does for me. Yeah. Every day of my life, his kindness, his faithfulness. I just, I can never thank him enough for what he does for me day after day. I give him all the praise and all the glory. He is so good, and I just thank him for it with all my heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's always good. We thank the Lord for that. Nelson's asking us to pray for his wife, Isef. They live in Pakistan, and um, uh, she's been selected for the post of vice principal at, in the uh, Naval School but uh, the, there's a delay going on on the school's end, so they're asking for a swift process. They would really appreciate our prayers, so we want to pray for that as well, that uh, uh, SF would have a quick process in that job. Anybody else has a prayer request, prayer, uh, praise? Anyone? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's welcome Holy Spirit here in this house, practice his presence. 
talk to him as if he's here because he is. Let's follow him as if he knows where he's going because he does. And I believe that he wants to lead us into the fullness of God's promises, his wonderful presence, the Holy Spirit here this morning. Let's just thank him for his presence right now. We praise you for the opportunity to come into your presence right now. Lord, we don't take this for granted. God, we enter into the presence of the Most High, Almighty God, in the matchless name of Jesus right now. Thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for the good news. God, I want to lift up Annette Bard in Jesus' name. God, Annette has been going through some, uh, some uh, situations with uh, uh, growth on her esophagus, and she's going to have treatments. God, over, the, over the, the next few weeks, and I pray those treatments would be successful. Right now, Lord, I anoint Janet with oil in the name of Jesus, and I declare, Lord, those pains leave her body in Jesus' name right now. Be done. God, we thank you for all that you do. I pray, Lord, that you would be with Judy today. I pray for Michael. I pray for Craig. Gregory, I pray that you would touch them. I pray, Lord, by your power that you'd minister healing in their bodies. I pray that you would remove this virus from uh, Gregory and Michael. I pray, Lord, that you would touch Judy. Lord, I pray that cancer dry up and be gone in Jesus' name. God, I pray most of all that you would touch her, Lord, that you would look to you. And God, that you would just minister to her in a very powerful way. Be with uh, Kathy. Give her strength that she's asking for. She's asked, Lord, so in the name of Jesus, be strengthened and we thank you for it. God, we thank you for Tom. I thank you for Russ. I pray, Lord, for his friend, Lord. I thank you for Tommy being a friend to Russ. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless him, help him that he's able to eat, Lord. I pray that you'd give him strength, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray for Abe this morning, Lord. I pray that you would touch him. I pray that you would divinely minister healing in his body. God, that you would take all stiffness from his neck, Lord. Heal him in Jesus' name. God, will thank you for it. Lord, your word declares that if we have the faith Faith, uh, the, the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed that we'd speak to the mountains and they'd be cast into the sea. God, in Jesus' name, we believe that right now and we thank you for it. We thank you for Gene's testimony. I thank you for Paul's testimony, the good things that you've done and are doing, Lord. I praise you, Lord, for all that you're working in. I thank you, Lord, that you always keep your hand upon us. You keep us safe. I thank you for Janet's testimony, Lord, that her uh, uh, nephew is doing better, Lord. I praise you for that and we thank you for it. I pray, Lord, that you would divinely move upon uh, those that uh, have illnesses, Lord, that need to be healed, complete healing. Let them walk in faith into that healing. I pray for my daughter Beth, Lord, complete healing. I pray for Missy Kane, complete healing. I pray for Mary Robinson, let the healing flow in her body. God, we thank you, Lord. Be with Bernice today. I pray, touch her, minister to her. I pray that you would divinely heal Bernice this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would be with uh, uh, Rick Hartman, Lord, touch his body. I pray for Isaf, Lord, in Jesus' name. As she's in Pakistan, I pray, Lord, that, that that process would just go quickly. In Jesus' name, we declare it and we ask it. And I pray, Lord, that she would get news quickly uh, about this position. I pray whatever it's holding it up, whatever is hindering it, be gone in Jesus' name. We'll thank you for all that you do and all that you minister in. We praise you, Lord, that you're with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Lord, that you're faithful. Today, Lord, as we come into your presence, presence, Lord, as we gather around the word. I pray, Lord, that you would just let the anointing that's in the word just uh, flow into our lives, Lord. And God, I thank you that you're able to do exceedingly more than we can ask or imagine according to the, the power that's at work within every one of us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do and all that you minister in. I pray, Lord, that as we hear the word, that you would anoint our ears to hear, anoint our minds to process this word. And Father, we pray that you would anoint our hearts to receive this word. Anoint my lips to share this word with your people. God, we thank you, Lord, for Kim's testimony, the good weekend that they had. And I praise you, Lord, for all that you do. And I'm praying, thanking you for all that you accomplish. God, we thank you, Lord, that when we come into your presence, chains fall off. Every bondage falls off. It cannot stand to be in your presence. God, your word declares that everything bows at the name of Jesus. So, Father, we come into your presence right now and we declare that everything that we try to bind your people, Lord, be broken in Jesus' name right now. God, I thank you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty, and we thank you for it. We pray, Lord, that you are going to move powerfully and mightily in our midst, and God, you're going to help us to look 
at your word and see power and see victory. God, we're going to walk in faith and not fear. We're going to walk in prayer and not doubt. And God, we'll thank you for all that you do and all that you accomplish. In Jesus' precious name, we praise you. We thank you for Gail's uh, praise, and I pray for her as she goes to this procedure today. I pray you all have already gone before her. I pray that it be quick, effective, Lord, and beneficial to her, and, and I got a quick recovery for her in Jesus' name, quicker than anyone would think. God, this morning, I pray for Tanisha that you'll continue to bring her uh, along in the healing in her body, and God will thank you for everything that you do and all that you minister in. In Jesus' name, we praise you, and we thank you for all things. God, once again, we pray for this nation. We stand in the gap. We pray that you would break every bondage that the enemy, break every fear. I pray that uh, as the enemy tries to come in like a flood, that you would raise up a standard against him. God, we pray for... Um, school board meetings that are taking place. Let them come to their senses. I pray, Lord, those that are believers, that they would operate in faith and not fear. And God, will thank you for all that you do and all that you minister in. God, we praise you for your faithfulness and your goodness and your mercies. I thank you, Lord, that uh, no evil can stand in your presence. So God, we are determined to be in your presence where evil cannot come against us. We'll thank you for all that you do. We pray for our brothers and sisters around the world some of them facing very hard persecution. God, I pray that you would touch them. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them. I pray that you would strengthen their faith, help them to stand strong in their faith. And God, will give you the praise and the honor and glory for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God is good. Amen. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Uh, we're in the book of Galatians. I'm going to go quickly through a couple of these PowerPoints. I'm going to finish the first part of Galatians today. And um, I don't know how many bets are going on back in the sound booth, but I'm, <laughs> I'm betting on me. <laughs> okay. We're going to finish Galatians 1 today and go into Galatians 2. Um, they, they gave me more time without the announcement video, so uh, that really doesn't matter, though. Okay, let's... Galatians was written by Paul. It was written around the year 49 AD, 49 years after. It is written in a, a very close proximity to Jesus uh, being on earth. It's known as the chapter of Christian freedom. And we made note over the last couple of weeks that uh, Paul would go to a place like Galatia to the Galatian church and speak to them. There'd be people who they referred to as Judaizers would come around about and try to tell them that uh, they had to become really Jewish before they'd become Christian. In Galatians, we realize freedom from the law, freedom from the power of sin, and freedom to serve the Lord. I want you to pay attention especially to that last phrase, freedom to serve the Lord. We have a freedom. It doesn't matter where you are. You have a freedom to serve the Lord. Nothing can keep you from serving the Lord. And so um, put up the next point, please. Um, most early Christians were Jewish believers. Um, if you're here Sunday night, um, Roy Swartz was here for, uh, with uh, Chosen People Ministries, and he said that one of the things that uh, really drew him into a relationship with the Lord. He was Jewish, that people that were Gentiles were excited about the fact that he was Jewish because they said, our Bible's Jewish, our, our Jesus is Jewish. You know, uh, the, and many people forget this. Every, everyone in the early church was Jewish. Everyone, until they went to Cornelius' house and it opened up to the Gentiles. And what many people don't understand either, and we'll get to that later, that there, there were, they were not all white people and they were not all people of, of color. There, were, there was a mixture of, of people, of cultures in the early church. Some of them were from Niger, which was in Africa. And so we need to understand 
that, you know, these walls and things that people are putting up were never there in the early church and never have been meant to be there. Galatians is primary, primarily written to refute the Judaizers who were Jews who were coming behind where Paul would preach uh, and call believers back to a pure gospel. According to the Judaizers, Gentiles had to become Jews in order to be saved. And um, we've got to be careful of that even in the day that we're living in today. I think that there's so much um, to learn from Jewish tradition. There's so much symbolism in uh, the Old Testament and even in, uh, in the temple and all that kind of thing. And all those things are very, very important and interesting. But the reality is that when Jesus came and died on the cross, he came to bring us into a new and better covenant than has ever been on the face of this earth. And so there is no longer Jew and Gentile. We have become one in Christ Jesus. That's, that's a reality that we need to understand. I th you know, we, we thank God for our heritage, and, and I don't see anything wrong with, with celebrating the festivals and that kind of thing, only to remember that you don't have to celebrate the festivals to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we need to understand there's much symbolism. Even in the Passover supper, many don't even don't understand that whenever Jesus instituted communion, he was going through the process of the last supper. And whenever he gave the cup of communion to his disciples, it was the last cup in the communion or in the Passover supper that he was celebrating with them. And so he, he instituted a new covenant, a new and better covenant. If you were here when... Um, uh, Jonathan Shuttlesworth was here the first day. He talked about the covenants, the better covenants, that, that even um, in the Old Testament, uh, you know, some of those men did not, Job was, under, was not under the covenant that we're under today. He was under a, a, an old covenant. And so we thank the Lord for all that he's doing. Um, they charged Paul, these Judaizers would come behind Paul and they charge him with, with two things. They'd attack him. They'd say he was not among the original apostles and therefore uh, what, he, what he taught really didn't have any authority. He wasn't with Peter, John, all the rest. And even, even uh, Paul would tell them, you know, I never saw them for like 13 or 14 years. He never came to Jerusalem. He was taught by the Holy Spirit. They would say his message departed from the gospel preached to Jerusalem. And so uh, they, would, they would say that about Paul. They tried to discredit the messenger. His, they would say his message of grace would result in lawless living, that people would just be living any way they wanted to live. As, as we open reading Galatians, Paul and Barnabas had just completed their first missionary journey. And uh, so according, uh, 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 according to the, the Judaizers, uh, Gentiles had to become Jews before they could be saved. And that simply was not according uh, to the word of God. Paul emphasized being rescued from the, the pre evil present age. He encouraged people to understand that the world was full of cruelty, tragedy, temptation, deception. And we are not, we are not taken out of this world, but we are no longer uh, slave to it. We are, he emphasized being rescued from this present age. We are saved to live for God. In this world that we're living in, yet we are saved and have the freedom to live for God. We've got, we've got to get that in our mind and, and not be, not be uh, dictated to by the culture. As we go through verses 6 and 7, we've already uh, been through that part of it. Uh, Paul says, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. And that was a gospel just mixing uh, Judaism with, uh, with, uh, with the gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion. And who is the author of confusion? The, 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 the devil is the author of confusion. They're trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. And anything that is perverted comes out of its natural uh, power. Uh, the, the natural power that is in that thing, you know, is not there. Um, it used to be you get apple juice and um, they would say, well, you need to dilute that with water so it doesn't harm your kid's teeth, right? 
Well, it didn't become apple juice anymore. It was losing its power. It was, it was weakened. But I, you know, I understand the process. But I'm just showing you that when you add anything to something, it, it, the power of it is lessened. If you, were, if you were to take a can of Diet Coke and fill half a glass with Diet Coke and fill the other half with water, guess what? You don't have the benefit of either at that point. Or even worse, if you were to take a half a, cu- a half a glass of Diet Coke and fill it with a half a glass of milk, that really dilutes the power of both of them, right? really. And so that's, that's the, the reality of what Paul is saying. You cannot add anything to this gospel message. We are saved because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We realize that we're sinners. We repent of our sins and we come in repentance before the Lord and we give him the rest of our life. And that is what saves us, period. Nothing else. Everything else, there's nothing wrong. Uh, You know, the reality is, and I say this uh, carefully, coming to church doesn't save you. That doesn't mean you shouldn't come to church, right? Right? The, the reality is when people say, well, I don't have to come to church to be saved. You know what? That, that is true. That is true. But you rob everyone else out of what you can bring into the mix of being together with believers. The Bible teaches us that not one of us, you know, if, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the assignment of the Great Commission. And who by ourself can fulfill that assignment? None of us. None of us can fulfill that assignment by ourselves. Even if you worked every opportunity you could get to reach people and bring them into the kingdom of God, there's no way that you could fulfill that assignment because the assignment is to go into where? How much of the world? All the world and preach the gospel. Not one person can do that. And so though we can be saved, we cannot fulfill the assignment that God has given us to do and to accomplish. Some were teaching faith in Christ was not enough. And um, they also were saying salvation, uh, you know, we we need to understand salvation uh, for all is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. As I said, the Judaizers, um, they were very zealous. They were very sincere. um, And they caused Paul a lot of problems along the way. They were very sincere and religious. You know, we need to be careful that we don't become very sincere and religious. You know, and, and we can do that by, you know what, just a whole lot of things, whether someone's dressed the right way. How, how many have looked at some Orthodox Jews? None of us dress like Orthodox Jews. And when I first got saved, there's not one person in this, I'm looking around, there is not one person, including me, that would be dressed well enough to uh, please the people who I got saved under. Think about that. Because I got saved in a place where women didn't come to church without a dress. And men didn't come into a church without a suit and tie on. And, you know, listen, if that's the conviction that God has given you, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can't make a commandment out of a conviction. I tell people all the time, if somebody, if the Lord told you not to wear anything but white shoes the rest of your life, you can't go start the first assembly of the white shoe just because that's the conviction that God has given you. And God very well might do that for you to be obedient to him. But it's not something then that we fall after. So when we're looking at these Judaizers, we need to be very careful that we don't fall into the same trap that they were in, Right? And what they, what they were upset about is that, that Paul was leaving out their customs and their traditions. And how many times are there issues in the church because someone wants to hold on to a custom or a tradition or the way something's done, and it ends up that we miss what God wants to do in our life? You know, these people were seeing people saved, they're seeing people set free and all those kind of things. Before accepting the teaching of any group, You need to find out what they teach about Jesus. In their teaching, if their teaching does not match up to the word of God, it's perverted. It has taken the power of God out of it. In verse 8, Paul condemns the false teachers. And he says that, but even if we we or an angel from heaven 
should preach a gospel other than the one, one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. The King James says, let them be accursed. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. He says it twice in two verses. Let them be eternally condemned. And uh, it's good to see Judy Scanlon online with us. Dottie, it's good to see you online as always. And um, uh, Larry, Nelson, thank you for being online with us. Sandy's been on as well. And he goes on verse 10, he says, I am now trying, am, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? It's a question mark. If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. There is a curse on those who spread a false, false gospel. The message of truth uh, it can never be changed. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen says, and no wonder... And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. You see, it's not what's on the inside, it's the actions, or it's not what the facade that's on the outside, it's the actions that are motivated from the heart that really determine where we are with the Lord. Satan himself masquerades as an, as an angel of light. You go on to verse 11 in Galatians 1, it says, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. Let that, let that get into your mind. The gospel that I preach is not something that man made up. Who would have ever come up with what God gave us to preach? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, sent him to a teenage girl to be raised by as a baby born in a manger, not in a palace, in a manger, left him grow up in the home of uh, a carpenter, learning the carpenter's trade, bringing him to a place of public ministry. And three years after that public ministry, he was mutilated and put on a cross died for our sins. Who would have ever come up with that idea? If anyone preaches any other gospel than that, the Bible says, let them be accursed. Jesus, when he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. The Bible also teaches us that when he was on the way of the cross, he took stripes of healing upon his back for us. And listen, he was not being beaten for our sins. The Bible teaches very clearly that he took stripes of healing upon his back. If he was being beaten for our sins, why didn't God just stop it there instead of allowing him to be mutilated and hung on a cross? He was hung on a cross for our sins, but he took the beating for our iniquities, for our sicknesses, to bring healing into the body. He, he paid the price for us as he, even as he was going to the cross. On the cross, he paid the price for the sins of the world. We need to begin to get this, this perception in our mind and not let the enemy, you know, talk us into things. You know, well, you know, well that's just the way it is. You're getting older. Well, you know what? Don't listen to the devil. Do you know what? Aaron, and, and I, you know, I'm going to, Aaron went to the mountain. Think about this. God spoke to Moses and told him to take Aaron to the mountain, take the priestly garments on him, put it on his sons, because Aaron was not coming back down. Now, I don't know about you, but if the man walked up a mountain, he probably wasn't stumbling around, drooling. You understand what I'm saying? He, he was healthy enough to walk up that mountain. And, and the Bible says that God told Moses... On that mountain, you take the priestly garments off of him and you put them on his sons because he's going to die there. You know what the reality is? You don't have to be suffering to die. God will just call you home. And that, that you know, I think every time that I go to sleep, if God, if you're done with me, this might be the last time I close my eyes and the next time I open my eyes, I might be in your presence. I'm putting, I'm putting that request in for the Lord. So if one day 
Somebody says, well, he just didn't wake up. God just answered my request. You don't, don't let the devil talk you in. The Bible says about Jacob, or, or I'm sorry, Caleb. Caleb at 85 years old said, listen, we've been wandering around this, this wilderness. He, he was 45 years old when he started wandering around the wilderness. Well, for many of us in America, we think life is over at 45. We think we can't do anything at that point. But by the time he was 85, he said, Moses told me I could have that land, and I'm as strong now as I was when we started this journey. But we've, we've got to, we're listening to a gospel, but make sure it is the pure gospel. We're listening to the gospel of the medical field. We're listening to the gospel of people that are telling you you can't do things. When the scripture says that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, and no one can make that work in your life except you, you've got to walk in your own faith. You, you'll never be able to walk in someone else's faith. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we have got to uh, we've got to um, know what the Word of God says. If you don't read it, you don't listen to it, you're not going to know what the Word of God says. You know, if you're saying you're feeling old, just ask God to give you a new feeling, right? <laughs> he said, ask. <laughs> Jesus said, if you come in the presence of the Father and ask anything in my name, I will ask the Father and he will give it to you. Now, I know how that works. Because if you're in a family with multiple children, you get the one that has the best chance of getting a yes from the parents to go ask. Oh, many of you are laughing because you either did that or you've been in that family. <laughs> you know, this one, you know, if they ask, we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, I was the oldest, and uh, my younger brother got to do a lot of things earlier than I got to. You know, I had to take him to ride my bike with me. I wasn't allowed to ride my bike on the road till a certain time, and now he's my younger brother, and he can just come along. What's up with that? Right? And so we've got this brother who the Bible says we are joint heirs. We're, we're, we're in this family when we accept Christ. And we've got this brother that if he asks the father anything, the father will give it to him. Now, how many know it would make good sense to ask that brother to go to the father and give you what you want? That's why I, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, you said, if I come and ask anything of you, you will go and ask the Father and he will give it to you. I'm asking you to help my daughter walk in faith for her healing. I'm asking you to help Missy Kane walk in that faith. I'm asking you to touch Mary Robinson. I'm asking you to do those works in Jesus' name. Do you understand the power in Jesus' name? And, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing when, when we think about it. So, if we preach another gospel, there's a curse that goes with that. And, uh, and Paul, Paul's, uh, his authority, they questioned his authority, but now in verse 11, he says, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Now, when he says he received it from revelation, from Jesus Christ. Guess who was involved? The third person of the Godhead who we're teaching about on Sunday mornings, Holy Spirit was teaching him. Because Jesus had, had, had been on, gone back to the right hand of the Father. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. Paul, his name was Saul, and he stood and watched as, as Stephen was being stoned to death. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age. In other words, I was climbing the ladder really quickly and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. He said, just like you are, I understand where you're at. But when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son 
in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not consult any man. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter. So he said, you know, three years. I said longer than that. But it's three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter and stayed with him 15 days. After three years of his experience on the way to Damascus, he went and he, he, he met with Peter and stayed with him for 15 days. Met with him for 15 days. I saw some of the other apostles. Oh, he says, I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. So he, he met with Peter. He didn't see the other apostles. And, and he met with James' brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing you is no lie. Later, I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally known to the churches of Judah that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy, and they praise God because of me. Why should the Galatians listen, listen to Paul? And this is what he was getting at. Why should you listen to me? He said, number one, my, the message that I'm preaching was received from, from Jesus, and, and it was through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was ministering to him. And number two, he was, listen, he said, one place he said, I was a, a, a Jew above, uh, above Jews. I mean, he was a, a traditional Jew. He said, I bought into this whole thing of trying to stop the spread of the gospel. I was an exemplary Jew. I was a Pharisee above Pharisees. I was exceeding, I was going forward uh, and, and passing many of my own age. He had a special conversion experience. And, you, you know, there, there you can... He had an encounter with the, with the Lord. Paul had this special conversion experience on the way to Damascus, and he was on his way to do what? To put um, um, Christians in prison. It's good to see Kim online as well as Sherry. Great to see you. We miss both of you guys in service, so we're praying for you. Number four, he had been confirmed and accepted in his ministry by the other apostles. The other apostles, though he was not one of the original ones, accepted his ministry and confirmed his ministry. That's why it's important to have your ministry confirmed by others of your peers. And um, I believe that's something that we uh, need to understand that as we read in the book of Acts and we read in Galatians here, much of what was done in the early church wasn't done just because somebody got a good idea. In fact, in one place, it seemed, the, the Bible says it seemed right to the Holy Spirit and to us to send Paul and Barnabas on their missions uh, journey uh, from Antioch. When, when people look at you, do they recognize that God has changed you? That's the question that we need to ask, and that's the, that's the thing that Paul was getting to with his... Um, his uh, people that he was teaching. He said, I'm not the same person. There's been a conversion in my life. We're going to move into Galatians 2. So whoever betted that I wouldn't get there just lost. So <laughs> I don't know. Do they have the, you guys have the handout for chapter 2? I got it. Good. So we're not going to finish this chapter. But we're going to get into it. Paul was accepted, as I said, by uh, the apostles. So he's given this explanation. I'd not even seen Peter for three years. After three years, I went and spent 15 days with him. And now he begins in Galatians 2.1. It says, 14 years later, I went up to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas. So he, he meets with Peter after three years, but then he, he after 14 years, he goes, uh, he went up again to Jerusalem. I took Titus along also. I went in response to a revelation and set before them the gospel that I preached among the Gentiles. 
But I did this privately to those who seemed to be leaders for fear that I was running, for fear that I was running or had run my race in vain. So what, what he's doing, he's going to Jerusalem to get the support of the leadership of the church in Jerusalem. He's, he's preaching to, to Gentiles. He's speaking uh, to Gentiles, but he wants the support of those that are in leadership. And he goes on, he says, yet not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to be circumcised, even though he was a Greek. You know, so, you know, you could say a whole lot about this, you know, um, the Jews thought everyone had to be circumcised to be saved. And we've sort of got the same thing going on around in our culture today. If you don't take the vaccine, then you don't love, the, love people. You know, I've had, had people say, if you don't wear a mask, that means you don't love your neighbor. That's, that's just craziness. Titus was not compelled to be circumcised. This matter arose because some false brothers has infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. But the enemy will always want to bring you back into bondage. And religious bondage is probably worse than the bondage of sin and being in sin because at least when you were living in sin, you were enjoying your sin. You understand what I'm saying? People that are in religious bondage don't enjoy life at all. They don't, they're always thinking, I had a better time in Egypt. At least I had cucumbers and fish. I, you know, go to the bar with my buddies and somebody buy me a drink and all that kind of thing. Always thinking those things that were better. Someone who is in religious bondage is worse off than someone who's in slavery to sin. And really, in, in, in reality, they probably are still in slavery to sin. Verse 5 says, We do not give in to, their, to them for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might remain with you. As for those who seem to be important, whatever they were, were makes no difference to me. Now, you know, Paul was just saying, you know, I, I went to get the backing of the leaders, but, you know, the reality was I was not basing everything that I do on what, who they were. God had given me a commission, and I was sharing the vision that God had given to me. And when he did that, it, it was an amazing thing because it got everybody on the same page. He wasn't just off doing his own thing. Because how many know that if Paul wouldn't have went and talked to the leadership of the church, the Judaizers are going to talk to them. The Judaizers who are saying Paul is doing everything wrong are going to talk to them and get them turned against him. And, you know, so I look at, I look at this and, and you don't have a whole lot of, it's not much different today than it's ever been. Someone with an agenda, you know, there is such a thing as a spirit of Absalom. You know what the spirit of Absalom is all about? Spirit of Absalom is this. Absalom was David's son who overthrew the kingdom. And what Absalom would do, would go to the gate and he would stand. He said, if I were the king, I wouldn't make you do this. If I were the king, I wouldn't be putting this in place. Until eventually he won the people over. There is a spirit of Absalom still alive, very much alive in the world today. There are three spirits that I talk about that you need to be careful of. Number one is the spirit of Absalom, the spirit of Jezebel, and the spirit of the Pharisees. The spirit of the Pharisees was a spirit that they could see people rise from the dead and they'd criticize everything that Jesus did. There are people that can see people lives being changed and healed and delivered and coming to know Jesus and they'll criticize everything that's happening around about them. That's the spirit of the Pharisee. Absalom, he just said, you know, if I were king, I'd do it different. You know, and I think that every one of us need to be careful not to fall into that. And I look at times in past in my life, I've probably fallen into the, some of those things. And you know, if, in order for God to take it away from you, you need to admit that you've fallen into those things. 
Jezebel, she, she was just, um, she was a piece of work. You know, she was just, no, she was under one, no one's authority. You know, her, her husband was king, but she ran the kingdom. And, um, you know, she had a, 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 an innocent man put to death because her husband wanted to buy his land. I think it was Nabal. And um, husband wanted to buy this man's land and he wouldn't sell it. And he went home crying. And she made up a story that, you know, Nabal had done this and brought witnesses in to testify to it. And they stoned him. And she said, now go get the land. Go get the land that you want. What, what are you doing here crying? And, you know, she, uh, she is the one that finally God dealt with her. And uh, they threw her down off the wall. And the prophet said that the, the dogs will lick the blood of Jezebel. And by the time the dogs were done, there was nothing but a skeleton left of her lane. You know, if you, I say many, many times, if, if the Bible were made into a real life movie, I don't think half of us could watch it. I think, can you imagine those, those dogs just tearing her apart? I can't, and we think about the passion of the Christ, but then some of the things that went on in, in the Old Testament would be definitely at least R-rated in, on a movie screen. And we, we, need, we need to understand that there is a simple gospel that we need to preach. It's just a simple gospel that sets people free. And um, all of us, can live under the freedom that God has for us and not have to be the slaves that the enemy wants to, wants to cause us to be. As for those who seem to be important, he said, whatever they were makes no difference to me. God does not judge by external appearances. Those men added nothing to my message. Now, listen, listen to what he's saying. He wasn't saying that he didn't respect those men. He said those men were not adding anything to the message. In other words, the revelation that he received by, through Holy Spirit was exactly what those men were teaching and preaching as well. They did not add anything. What I, what I received from the Lord matched up to what they were preaching and what they were teaching in the early church. That's what he's saying. He is not demeaning those men. He's not showing a lack for their, their place of authority or anything like that. But he's saying they, had, they didn't add anything to my message. On the contrary, listen, they saw, that I had, they saw that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles just as Peter had been to the Jews. For God, who was at work in the ministry of Peter as an apostle to the Jews, was also at work in my ministry as an apostle to the Gentiles. And that always interested me that God sent Peter to Cornelius' house, but yet Peter was an apostle to the Jews, and Paul became the apostle to the Gentiles. Because sometimes when I'm trying to keep, keep those names straight, I'm thinking, well, Peter, he's the apostle to the Gentiles. He went to Cornelius' house, but that's not true. He was, his call was to the Jews, but he was obedient that day when he had that vision on the rooftop to go to Cornelius' house and speak the message of the gospel where those people, Cornelius, imagine the faith that Cornelius had when the angel told him to go and tell Peter to come. He had so much faith that Peter was going to come that he gathered his whole family together, right? That's, faith causes action, right? Peter was willing to come, and when he got there, he said, well, you know, it's not right for me to be here according to the law. Why have you sent for me? And he tells me this whole story about the angel appearing to him. And so I sent for you. And Cornelius says, God said, you tell us what we need to know. And he shared Jesus with that whole crowd. The Bible says not only did they receive Jesus, they're all baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Everyone in that house. But what faith it took. For a man who didn't even know Jesus, who was seeking, when the, I guess when an angel appears to you, that's pretty, pretty convincing, right? But to, I'm thinking sometimes we have experiences with God, and the next time something pops up, we think we're going under instead of realizing 
If God saved us from the lion and the bear, he's going to save us from this situation we're in as well. God is always for us. He's never against us. And, you know, any trouble that comes, God will lead you through it. He's not going to let you drown in it. God was at work in the ministry of Peter as an apostle to the Jews, was also at work in my ministry as, a, as an apostle to the Gentiles. James, Peter, and John, those reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given me. They agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the Jews. All they asked was that we should continue to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. And so all they were asking is when you go to these Gentiles, remember that you need to take care of those that are in need. After his conversion, Paul spent many years preparing for the ministry to which God would call him to. And this preparation time included... Um, um, Yep, we're on, that's all right. We're on the wrong one. We'll, we'll get it. No problem. So we're in chapter two. Yeah. Tom must have thought I wouldn't get done with chapter one. I bet he was betting against me back there. <laughs> okay. Paul spent, Paul spent many years preparing for the ministry God had called him to. And, and that preparation included what, time alone with God and um, time conferring with other Christians. And this, this was the Apostle Paul who wrote two-thirds of the New, New Testament. He spent time alone with God. He went to Arabia. He did not see the other apostles for, for three years. Holy Spirit was ministering to him and, and uh, speaking to him. Often new Christians will try to bypass preparation and you know what, one of, the, one of the things that many people try to bypass is the first item, and that is time alone with God. They're willing to go to Bible school, but they're not willing to spend time alone with God. They're willing to listen to a podcast, but they're not willing to spend time alone with God. You see, because the reality, and one of the things when, when um, you know, Christian music came on the scene, one of the things I would hear people say, you know what, I, I'm spending my uh, time with the Lord listening to Christian music. You know, that's okay. Christian music is good, but that is not your time alone with the Lord. Your time alone with the Lord is when you are praying and you're reading Scripture. That's your time alone with the Lord. Every, everything else is just the icing on the cake. You know, if you have just a bowl full of icing and no cake, you're probably going to get sick. Though I, I like the icing. Nancy makes like a whipped icing. I, I make sure I get the bowl every time it's done. And uh, it's awesome. I don't like cake that much. But the reality is you need to get the, um, the meat of that time with the Lord. And often... New Christians will try to bypass preparation. In their zeal, they want to start a full-time ministry without necessarily, necessarily studying the Bible and learning from uh, qualified uh, teachers and getting the approval of people around about them. We don't have to wait to share the gospel with our family, friends, but we need, we need to, to spend time in preparation. Even Jesus uh, had a three-and-a-half-year public ministry but he prepared. John the Baptist prepared for the ministry that he had by being in the wilderness for a number of years before he came on the scene. And the time that he was on the scene was not all that long. You know, uh, Bill made mention that he spent an hour on, uh, on putting the Bible trivia together. Well, it didn't take him an hour to share it, right? And what, what you prepare, you know, I'm, I've shared a lot of things with you in probably about 40 minutes time, but I can guarantee it takes more than 40 minutes to put together what we want to share. Preparation, you know, it doesn't take long to make a steak or to eat a steak, but there's a lot of preparation goes into getting it to the place that it can be eaten, right? First of all, some, how, many, how many understand that 
meat doesn't just appear in packages. You understand that, right? I know this is Harrisburg, but I know you all understand that. They, that, that meat is walking around in the field right now, right? And somebody has to have the job of slaughtering that beef and taking the hide off. I know it get, gets gross. <laughs> Cutting the head off. Somebody's got to have that job. Somebody's got to have the job of, you know, cleaning everything out. There is preparation for everything. And it takes, the preparation is the foundation for um, what we, you know, if there's no preparation, then what you present is not going to have very uh, much uh, to offer. Uh, one of the worst things I, you ever have a hamburger that doesn't taste like hamburger, it tastes like artificial meat? I don't like that. You know, I've never had one of those impossible burgers at Burger King because I figure what's the use, what's the use to destroying something that's not broke, right? <laughs> well, I don't want to, well, I don't want an impossible burger when I can have a Whopper. I'll, I'll take the Whopper anytime. I've tasted and seen it is good, right? <laughs> And so I'll stick with that. Uh, I'm not going to fix something that ain't broke. And so we, we, we need to, to understand. We, we want the pureness of, of the gospel. And I'm out of time. But um, let, me just, let me just say one more thing. While we wait for God's timing, we should continue to study, learn, grow. Jesus did that. John the Baptist did that. And, you know, let me, you know, one of, one of the things that I've seen over the years is that um, young people go to Bible college, but they, never, they, you know, they sleep in on Sunday morning instead of going to church. And I'm thinking, you're planting seed that you're going to harvest someday. Every student in Bible college, just because they have chapel during the week, just because they're studying for ministry does not exempt them from the scripture that says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, especially when you see this day approaching. Doesn't exempt you. The other thing that I've seen people that, you know, they, they feel like they're called into a ministry, but they're not connected to a church anywhere. There are missionaries that are wanting to go on the mission field, but they're, you know, not regular in a church service anywhere. You know, whenever they have an opportunity, you know, you know, just because they've been on the mission field, now when they come home, they're not regular in a service anywhere. In my mind, there's something wrong with that picture. Because you will reap what you sow. And if you expect as a, as a young minister that people are going to come into the house of God, then you've got to, you've got to sow seed so that that can be harvested. In your life. But the, the problem becomes is that sometimes even the ministers of the gospel don't want to be in church. They're looking for how we can do things quicker and in less time. And whenever we, whenever we do that, in my opinion, we take a half a cup of Diet Coke and put a half a cup of milk in it, and none of it's any good at that point. If you're here today and you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior online, you've drifted away, you're drifting from God. God wants to pull you back. He wants to pull you back into his presence, into his kingdom. Jesus loves you today. If you're here today and never accepted Christ, I want to pray for you. I'm going to ask us all to pray this prayer. And uh, if you're online, let us know. We'll make sure that we get in touch with you. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I thank you for the simplicity of the gospel message. God loved me so much. He sent you to die on the cross for my sin. Today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sin. And from this moment on, I put the rest of my life into your care and your control. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this group of people that have gathered here online and in this house this morning. 
And God, we thank you for the freedom that is in your presence, the freedom that where your spirit is, there is liberty, there is freedom. Thank you for that today. I thank you, Lord, that we go from this place. We go from this place realizing that you are for us and not against us. I pray bless this folk, these folks online and in this house. Bless them physically. Bless them financially. Bless them in their relationships. And as we pursue you with all of our heart, God, we will walk in divine favor each and every day being better than the other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer, let me know. I'll be glad to pray for you today. If you have any questions about anything I said, uh, please let me know. God bless you. Thank you for joining us, Mary.